really enthusiastic about the progress we've made uh, and what Rocky Vista University means for Billings and Montana's future in terms of healthcare. I want to thank you, Dr. Park, for your investment here and for your leadership. Uh, this is an exciting day. I understand we're going to have, we have the first potential 10 students are going to be here later today to tour the building. And uh, Dr. Moore is going to get them to press yeah. hard. Yeah, to hook them. Yeah, to hook them. Uh, they've had 1,200 applicants for 86 spots. So this is encouraging. Uh, before I begin with my comments, uh, I want to I want to start uh, by acknowledging our healthcare workers, um, especially those impacted at Billings Clinic with the, the situation we had at the ER over the weekend. Uh, it's been a tough period. Uh, what happened on Sunday night was troubling and traumatic for these workers with this shooting in the ER. Uh, it's a reminder that our healthcare workers are on the front lines every day. I give them credit. They they suited up every day during the pandemic and came in to take care of our people that were sick. And they see patients as well as their friends and family at, at their most vulnerable when they need care. And it and it takes a toll on them. And when they they deserve a safe work environment. Uh, but besides uh, what happened on Sunday, there have been other incidents in the workplace that exacerbate the stress that they feel from just doing their day job. Uh, no nurse or doctor or provider should fear for their well-being simply because they came to work to take care of patients. Uh, and I ask all Montanans to join me in standing with our healthcare workers uh, that are dedicated to keeping us safe and healthy. 23, it's no secret we're getting ready for the legislative session that kicks off in January. Uh, and these objectives have been arrived at through discussions with many healthcare providers and the community, uh, were, and they're grounded on really two core principles. First, we're focused on expanding access to high quality care across the entire state of Montana. And second, we're focused on lowering cost for Montanans. I hear this over and over again as we travel the state and visit with folks. Uh, we've made progress on both fronts, uh, which I'll recap in a moment. Uh, but there's a lot more we can do by working together. And that's why we're here at Rocky Vista. Rocky Vista represents the promise of the future of healthcare in Montana. Uh, here, a new pipeline of healthcare leaders will be built. As students come here to learn, train, and graduate, Montana will have more doctors ready to serve with compassion, excellence, and integrity in our communities. With so much excitement for the future here at Rocky Vista University, I can think of no better place to share my excitement for our 2023 healthcare agenda with you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Park and the Rocky Vista team for hosting us. Uh, it's, it's great to be here with you today. So without a doubt, we had some strong wins in the last two years as it relates to healthcare. We've also faced challenges, long-standing challenges that we're committed to addressing. Last year, we created new laws to increase access to affordable, high quality health care. Uh, number one, we authorized direct patient care agreements in Montana. That was a first. Under direct patient care, a patient generally pays a low cost membership fee directly to a provider for care, uh, taking the insurance company out of the picture entirely without having to deal with insurance companies, <coughs> providers' administrative burden is lower and their costs are lower. As a result, <coughs> patients save and they build stronger relationships with their doctor. And since we authorized this new form of care delivery, uh, direct patient care, the number of providers in the state has doubled in the last year. This is opening up new access. And consumers are benefiting from greater competition and greater choice in the marketplace. But it's not just about dollars and cents, uh, insurers, or routine care. For many years, and we all know this, we faced a substance abuse crisis in our state. It's really grown to epidemic levels. So last year, we made historic investment in addiction treatment 
services in our communities. With also, with unanimous bipartisan support, we expanded telehealth in Montana, making permanent some of the restrictions that were lessened during the pandemic. Uh, this provides access to high quality care throughout the state, particularly in our rural and frontier communities. But telehealth is not possible without access to broadband. Uh, this is why we made it a, a really a historic investment in broadband expansion, hundreds of millions of dollars to put more fiber in the ground to make sure that we can get care into our rural communities. In 2023, uh, we'll get these cables in the ground. Uh, we'll get the money out. We're pretty excited about some announcements we'll be making here just in the next couple of weeks about those grants. We've also uh, achieved, we've advanced the football down the field, as I like to say, uh, but we have more three to five yard plays to run to increase access and to lower health care costs for all Montana. So pillar one of our expanding access to care is first, we must expand our health care workforce capacity. We need more workers. Uh, with an increasingly aging population here in Montana, as well as our growing population, demand for health care providers continue to rise in Montana and our supply just hasn't been able to keep up. This has been a growing issue that we faced for many years and we're coming to the table with more solutions in 2023. We want to make it easier for qualified doctors, nurses and other health care providers to practice medicine in Montana by reducing unnecessary barriers that they face. Imagine if you're a doctor who's registered to practice medicine in another state and you're in good standing there. You move to Montana, as many people are. You shouldn't have to jump through burdensome hurdles to practice medicine here and start tra treating patients in your community. We must reform our licensure regime to reduce these barriers so that qualified individuals can practice here across the entire scope of their training. Additionally, we should enter into compacts with other states so that advanced practice uh, registered nurses or APRNs can obtain a license to pack practice throughout participating states. Montana needs to recruit and retain more doctors. Okay. You can have that. Thank you. Montana needs to recruit and retain more doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals. And Rocky Mountain Vista is a key part of this solution. Dr. Park, would you like to say a few words about what you're going to be doing here and your plans? Well, thank you, Governor. What inspiring words and kind words. We appreciate your presence here, celebrating our building here as we accept students and get ready to start. What we're doing here is going to impact healthcare, not just in Billings or Montana, not just the region. We're looking at global impact here. In the House of Medicine, we strive for something that's called the quadruple aim. It is a four part goal that consists of improving patient experiences, and that's especially through easy access to healthcare. Two is having better medical outcomes so that population health is improved. Three is reducing healthcare costs. And four is ensuring the well being of everyone on the healthcare team. You heard it in the governor's comments already, and in speaking with him, it is so reassuring and exciting to know that he gets it. And these are his goals for Montana. The mission of our new medical school is to educate and train highly competent physicians to serve the diverse healthcare needs of tomorrow through innovative education, relevant research, and compassionate service. I would guess it's no secret to anyone that everyone in our organization is deeply committed to undergraduate medical education at the medical school level. But I profess to you today that we are also committed to graduate medical education. And this means partnering with others to expand clinical training opportunities for residents. To more expediently and significantly increase the physician workforce, 
we need to grow and expand residency training positions and programs, and that's just as important as starting a new medical school in the state. Achieving that quadruple aim by in part increasing the healthcare workforce must be a combined effort. I believe this can be accomplished if we all work collaboratively with one another without prejudice or discrimination, regardless of religious or cultural beliefs, regardless of what professional letters comes after a healthcare worker's name, regardless if your government, public or private or nonprofit or not a nonprofit, this needs to be done together. Pillar number two in our plan is really lowering costs for patients. In addition to expanding access to care, and expanding our healthcare workforce, we're also focusing on lowering the costs. In the last 21 months, we've lowered costs by increasing choice, encouraging innovation, reducing unnecessary regulations, promoting competition, and increasing transparency, but there's more we can do. Working with the legislature, we want to increase medical billing transparency. What if, before a procedure, you knew what it, you'd have to pay? What if your provider or your insurer provided you with a cost estimate? We must ensure Montanans will have access to important pricing information prior to receiving services. With greater transparency on costs in advance, Montanans can make better healthcare decisions that work for them and their family. Ultimately, I recognize that much of the work to lower health care costs rests with the federal government and policymakers in Congress. It's part of what I worked on when I was back there serving Montana. But, and I know there's much more we need to do. I urge Congress and the Biden administration to take market-based approaches to lower health care costs for the American people, just as we've done here in Montana. But Congress, and the current federal administration should resist the urge to just throw more money at the problem and expect prices to come down for consumers. That just won't happen. Instead, they should seriously undertake market-based reforms that promote competition, increase transparency, boost consumer confidence, and encourage innovation. As we look ahead to the coming year, we must be nimble. We must be able to adapt to changes and in innovations in healthcare, increasing access to high quality, affordable uh, care requires that nimble posture. As we know, the healthcare landscape has changed drastically in recent years. From a dramatic increase in the demand for telehealth services to more seniors choosing to age in place and receive care in their communities, to the changing landscape the changing landscape informs our strategies to provide Montanans with greater access to affordable care. With that, I'd open it up, be happy to take some questions.